Welcome, nativetap.io, presenting our Nina, hold on, I want to get this right, Nina Wychorek, Jake Bushinsky, and Marcin Gesferovic. Take it away. That was a very good pronunciation, thank you. Thank you. I've practiced in my head many times. <laughs> Hi, my name is Nina, and I'm a co-founder of nativetap.io. Today, I'm going to show you a magic trick. I'm going to, going to show you how you can access and interact with any real mobile device just with one tap. So everybody knows that mobile fragmentation is now really ruining for mobile app developers. Irrespective of the size of the team, you're now probably spending one third of your total development budget just on testing. You have to buy a lot of devices, you have to hire a lot of people, and then if you don't do it, you're probably going to get bad review in the App Store. Yes, I do know that there are companies that are dealing with that problem, but what they actually do, they ask developers to write unit tests, and not many developers actually like doing that. And then they run the test in, on the real physical devices or emulators in the cloud, and then they present developers with a very long log, log with a lot of errors. It takes hours for those developers to actually look through those errors, trying to fix the problem without having the device in hand. This takes us back to a very, to very good period, 70s. This is where people had to develop software without having access to an actual computer. We decided at NativeTab, oops, Oh, that's a bold magic moment. But I, we decided at NativeTap to bring mobile app development to 21st century. We decided to do something quite magical. We put all of those devices into one tablet, so you can access those devices and interact with them as if they were on your desk. So let me show you how it works. We put all of the devices into our data center. Sorry about that. And then you can access them through our tablet app or mobile app or through your desktop. And so let's, can we switch to the demo, please? So this is the tablet, and you can see a native tab app. You simply open the, device, open, the open the app, and you choose, let's say, Moto X. And it takes a little bit, what, uh, and this is a real physical device that is currently 5,000 miles away in Poland. And you can see it's right there in front of you. You can scroll, you can open apps, and just this is a quick check that device actually is in Poland. You go on the, we go and go ask its location on Google Maps, and you can see we have an, even support the multi-touch, and it's indeed in Poland, not in New York. Okay, and this is groundbreaking, because once we figured out how to interact with real physical device as if it was on your desk, we can build countless Help, helpful features using that technology. We started off with testing and debugging. So let's say your user said that, okay, there's a problem on one plus one, and you want to, you desperately need a real physical device. So again, you, you go to the plus, one plus one, yeah, and, and then, oh, that's, sorry, it's right in front of you. And, uh, and then you basically, Normally you would have to, and, and it's as if it was USB connected to your computer. That means you don't have to pour over lengthy log cuts. You simply, can we switch to the computer, please? You set up a breakpoint in the code, and you do exactly what you would be doing if the device was on your desk. Now the, now, the, now the debugger is connected to your device that actually is in Poland, but you can see the app running. Can we switch up to the tablet, please? Yeah, the app running right in front of you, and you can interact with it as it was right there. And then you can interact, and then can we take it back to the computer? And then you can slowly debug it step by step because you can see what happens in the in the source code. So this is this is really great. Can we switch off? Yep, thank you. Again, there are, that's one of the many features that we're thinking about building. The, another feature is where you actually don't have to write unit tests. If you want to, you can, you can test on one device, and all of those touch events will be replicated on all of the devices in the cloud, and you will get an, a report if something doesn't work. Another thing for all of your 
enthusiasts of Internet of Things. Imagine you having all of those amazing smartwatches uh, nest in your house and you want to develop uh, develop apps working on it. Imagine you can now connect those devices to 100 devices that are far, far away from you and you can develop all of your apps. So the benefits are obvious. You save money. You can access any device anytime you want for a fraction of cost. You save time. Your team works much more efficiently. So you, they can build really cool stuff and deploy them faster. And you create better apps with greater market reach. So what that means, you don't have to now limit your target group simply because you can't afford to purchase all of those devices. And as with every magic trick, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours behind that technology. We created a patent pending input-output transfer technology that allows lifelike interaction with nearly zero latency. We created a custom-made server infrastructure now one server can support 200, up to 250 devices. We started off with seven. Uh, and that, that means that also covers much larger geographical areas. That means fewer data centers, fewer servers, and you know, higher gross margins. We created also algorithms, algorithms that will help us to you know, efficiently, if, if, if efficiently um, uh, manage the inventory of the devices. You know, the, the inventory and the purchase of new devices will be driven by demand uh, and also effective queuing algorithms. We created custom-made rack shelves that you can put inside the data center and you can add the devices really easily. Of, obviously, those, those, those uh, rack shelves also prevent devices from overheating. So there are, almost, there are over 1.3 million apps available on the market. Each and every single of that apps has to be tested. There are millions of crashes reported every single day. Every, every crash should be fixed. That makes it a $10 billion market, and those numbers are only going to go up. So if you want to, if you want to um, access any device and interact as it was there on your desk, please sign up for, a, for our beta, and we will show you how it all can be done just with one tap, native tap. Thank you. All right. Judges. Sure. So I'm actually very close to this problem as an engineer. Yes. Um, so I definitely feel that pain. I think it looks great. Thank you. I'm wondering if you could talk more about, you know, automating tests across many devices. Because you didn't demo that, but could you talk about how that experience would work? And furthermore, how about, like, performance testing? So, like, you know, when you're testing on a hardware accelerated device and um, trying to like really feel out transitions and animations like like could I use this to do that for example? Do you want to take that? Okay uh, So uh, we create a synchronized manual testing approach so uh, we can uh, touch on one device and uh, inject the events of the UI based object uh, on another devices so the test will do uh, real time and we have a lot of bugs in real time, and we can switch to the problem and fix it. So this is the new approach. In the and market. for performance as well, like, you know, getting down to like touch start and touch end events and like really getting into the details of, of how like an animation works. Yeah, we, we have all of the data from the, the real device. So we have FPS counter, uh, RAM memory, and etc. So we have the crash uh, and we see all the scope of the device. That's great. Uh, it's, it's impressive how much you guys have built and, and uh, the depth is to which you've, you've solved the problem. So congratulations on, on that. Um, as you think about users, uh, uh, companies coming on to use your platform, there's going to be a lot of data that comes out that, you know, this is a common problem on this device. This is, you know, something you should be careful of. On, on this device, are you able to share that cross company because of privacy issues? Or how do you sort of help developers get better at building on each of these devices? We, we, we are thinking about that, but this is not what we're actually primarily focusing on at the moment. What we're prim primarily focusing on at the moment is actually, you know, giving this real-life interaction. So, you know, one thing that we're really focusing on is just how to, uh, you, know, you know, even switching and switching between the devices, make it, you know, make it in the best possible way for our clients. 
So we're not focusing how many on sharing clients, the data. How many clients do you have today? So we have, at the moment, we have, uh, well, at the moment, we have about 4,000 uh, beta users and about 70 users that have been using it uh, quite, you know, quite significantly. What's the number one feature request? Uh, the number one feature is just debugging. What's the number one request? Sorry? What's the biggest request from the 70 people who are using it? What are they asking for the most? So, well, for instance, there are companies that have um, special uh, companies that do the like, music streaming um, thing. So they basically want to have the specific um, feature which will help them to have that, um, you know, uh, replay kind of a, a mode. So that's something that was quite interesting and we actually managed to figure out how to do that, which is great. Um, you know, there are different depending on the on the on the customer, but um, mainly they want more devices. More and more. Yeah. How do you charge for this? So we are thinking about, I'm going to be honest, we're still thinking about how to price it properly, but we see it as a kind of a SaaS uh, model. So there are different tiers of pricing. So you buy, you know, buy a um, certain amount of hours a month, and with the amount of hours you're buying a month, the price per hour actually drops. But also, the, more, the higher the tier you are in, the better your kind of a user experience. What I mean by this, in like, for instance, tier three and tier four, you are, um, you are able to book the devices uh, in advance, right? For just for your team for a certain amount of time. Uh, and then you are um, able to get an access to, pro uh, to the devices first. But what we're trying to achieve is to not to charge more than $5 per hour. Basically, what my concern is, and for my team concern, we don't want a developer to even think about getting an Uber ride, or actually maybe sending now an Uber, uh, to get the device from somebody else. And do you actually have the physical devices? Yes. It's a device as a service model. So, so what happens if I have a Samsung phone running four different versions of Android? Mm -hmm. You have four, four different devices? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So in, in your data center, how many devices do you have in, in versions of operating systems? At currently? the moment, we're starting off with the selection of uh, 50 devices, and then we will building it when we require. Uh, but you know, that's the only way, really, to solve that problem. There is no other way to solve it. All right. Fortunately, we're out of time. You guys did a great job. Thank you Thank very you much, so much. to NativeTap.io.